All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another special presentation of the SWBL podcast. And we are here with our third captain's interview. And I am joined by SWBL Astros captain, Brian Benware. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. I'm excited for it. Uh, let me start out by saying, you know, we're really excited for the year. Um, everybody's reporting healthy. So on barring injury before the season, we should be coming in at full strength. So uh, with that, time's yours. Awesome. And, you know, I wore my Astros hat just for you today. Um, you know, I've been trying to wear all the team hats as we go along. And I will tell everybody out there, the viewers, you know, every year we do these captain interviews, usually via email um, on paper, um, where they just send me back the answers and I put it on our website about 10 questions long. But now we're going to kind of spice it up a little bit and do some video interviews with the captain. So it's been a, it's been an awesome time. You know, you are the third one that we've done, um, but we've gotten some good insight on some teams. And when these get released, people will kind of get a feel for each franchise and how they're going to be going into season 19. And we're going to jump right to it, Brian. And the first thing I've been talking to everybody about is their roster. Obviously, your roster for maybe the first time in a long time, you guys are not, you did not participate in the SWBL draft. You did not draft anybody, which is a good sign for your team who constantly has this revolving door of trying to fill one spot. But you guys have, you know, seven ish players on your roster right now. And we're going to kind of go through those roster. And obviously, the big move that you made, and it's probably the biggest move since Brett went to the Expos, it is John Calloway pulled from the Yankees and is on your team. You know, everybody thought that David Olderman going to the Astros was a huge gift. It, but he didn't come last year because of COVID being from out of state. And that kind of stunk for your team to not have that. And Jeremy Worrell stepped up huge for your team on the mound. But this year, having David Olderman returning and John Calloway added to your team, you got to believe you're going to be a front runner for that unofficial official title of manager of the year, especially with your team coming off of a four and six year, the highest you've ever been. And that's without John and David. So kind of break down your roster for us, uh, Brian, and all the viewers out there, and then also kind of talk about, you know, what's going to happen with your rotation? Is Jeremy going to be used? What's going to happen? Are you going to go four-man lineup, five-man lineup for some games, fielding, all that? Kind of break it down for the viewers and the listeners out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you touched on two big things, and yeah, getting John over this year was huge. And I, you know, I think one thing that people – I don't want to say people overlook John because obviously there's a lot of hype with him coming over to our team. I mean, he's a huge get and we're so excited, but he's one of those guys who's a perennial top 10 hitter. Yeah. He, I think career has the best, the lowest strikeout rate of any player in the entire league. Um, it's baffling to me that he's never made an all-star game. And with, with some of the numbers he's put up, I think he hit 39 home runs one year. It was, I know it was the three man league, sure. three man season, but geez, um, so that's huge. He'll lead off for us and he'll be um, taking this, his normal spot in left field. He'll be our staple yeah. out there. Um, you know, and then you kind of mentioned David. Um, yeah, David, I was, I was pumped last year to get David and, and having um, the, the one, two that we had planned on and that didn't work out. But like you said, Jeremy stepped up. Um, so having David in, of course, that's still the plan. So him and Cam are going to rotate back and forth on who's starting games, but Jeremy is going to be a nice, confident arm off the bench for us. Um, so Jeremy kind of knows he's going to be kind of my relief pitcher, um, depending on matchups too. You know, there are matchups that he did really, really well on. Oh, so sure. he'll obviously be that first person off the bench potentially. But if there's somebody, let, let's say that David does really well against and Cam starts with struggles, I might throw David in, in those games too. So yeah. it just depends. Um, I'm, you know, I'm very much about, the hot hand, or at least I try to be, I, I'm going to take some steps as the manager to try to manage that a little bit better, but that's going to be the rotation. Um, lineup is going to shift. We're going to do four to five men lineups. We're not going to go above five um, unless really that's not going to happen. You right. know, I would say unless something, but that's not going to happen. We're going to try to find at bats for people um, in certain situations if we can, put somebody else in, sub somebody else in, but we're going to stick primarily with four or five at times, depending on the matchup. So, you know, the, your team with these draft picks that you've been building and me, you and I have had extensive conversations about this in your roster, you know, you lost 
you know, back-to-back rookie of the year, Zach Artem and Stephen Farkas, who, you know, the league would have loved to have both of them back um, year after year. Um, you know, they were great additions to our league and great additions to your team. And they could have been, you know, those cornerstones for that franchise, but with them not returning, you know, you, you kept struggling to find players and struggling to find people to cross over, but getting this kind of this foundation with cam and now Cole, you know, their brothers and having that foundation, I think has been huge for your franchise and then adding these pieces, you know, around them that you have. I mean, it's been a masterful performance to watch you as a GM and a manager put this together. Um, And I am so excited for this Astros team, but one of the huge pieces of your team that goes under the radar is Keaton Adams. And Keaton was an all-star last year for the first time. We didn't get to play the all-star game, but you only had as a franchise, one all-star selection. It was yourself as, you know, kind of the fan vote um, with that year in 2017. And then Keaton getting the nod um, for, you know, for his statistics last year. I mean, he was one of the statistic picks um, from the front office. And there was a bunch of guys that could have got that last selection, but ultimately it was Keaton who got it. And, you know, it was much deserved and he had an amazing sophomore season. What do you expect for him coming into his third year, especially now being a huge part of your offense? Yeah. I mean, he was a, obviously a huge part last year being an all-star and you're right. He's, he's semi overlooked, but everybody, everybody's been keeping their eye on Keaton. I think, I don't think he's necessarily overlooked. I just don't think he's talked about as much because he's primarily a hitter. Um, He can play the field a little bit. He can pitch, Mm -hmm. Um, but his role is, is at the plate and he knows that. And he's one of our most consistent hitters, if not the most consistent we've had over the past two years. Um, He's huge. He's, I mean, I'm super pumped for him to get, you know, a top 20 vote in, in recognition, yeah. that way. but yeah, he's going to be big. I mean, we're this year, I'm expecting the same thing, if not maybe slightly more statistically, just because I'm actually going to bump him up in the lineup. Nice. Um, he earned more at bats. Not that he was really that far down the lineup. He hit third for us last year. And yeah. there was a point even mid season. I thought about going ahead and bumping him up, but he was doing so well. It's like, man, why mess with something that's sure. really working for him. So we went ahead and left it that way, but this year he's going to, he's going to bump up. And then I think with the potential that we have as a lineup, um, you know, our goal is to just keep rolling through. Don't, don't create easy outs. Yeah. And that I think will only create more RBIs, more at bat potential for him and the rest of the guys. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that. The, the foundation that we have with, with him and Cam um, starting out a couple years ago and then adding, like you said, Cole, um, we're, we're really pumped. It's, it's a great time to be an Astro. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you mentioned it a little bit there, but, you know, Keaton getting the nod, uh, we always do this top 19 list or the top, however many, depending on what season's coming up, but for season 19, the top 19 players. And, you know, last year, I don't believe there was an Astro on the list. Um, and this year you already have two. Um, you know, you have um, number 18 and number uh, number 14 with Cam. 17, and 17, 17, excuse me, with Keaton. Thank you. Um, but 17 and 14. So having yeah. two players after having none um, and 14, obviously your highest. And John Calloway, you know, was on the list last year, but because he didn't play. So you got to believe he would be on that list as well if he would have mm-hmm. played back to back years. So technically three of the top 20 players in the league are on your team. And to be honest, there are a lot of teams that only have two Royals brewers, you know, there's Rockies only have two players on this top 19 list and you're right up there with them. So it is really exciting to see this Astros team um, go into this season. Um, And I'm so excited for you guys. And I'm so excited to see this being last year was a really super competitive year but I think this year is going to be even more competitive. So yes, congratulations to you guys. And as an off season, you definitely won um, out of everybody else. And we're excited to see it on the field in season 19. You know, this roster breakdown was brought to you by Logix. And, you know, Logix is our brand new media sponsor for the SWBL. And Logix simplifies logistics when you need freight moved with reliability. And if you have any questions about Logix or you want to reach out to them, you can go to LogixInc.com. That's L-O-G-E-X-I-N-C.com. And we welcome Logix to our sponsorship family. So, you know, I have one more question about your roster before we move on, Brian. And this is something fun I've been doing with everybody. Um, But think about your roster right now. 
everybody, including yourself. So you have all seven players and I have three suggestions for you. You have to start somebody, bench somebody and trade somebody with your roster, start bench trade. It's kind of like that, you know, Mary kill thing, you know, all that kind of stuff, but yeah. no hard feelings to anybody. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example. When my brother did this, he started me and he traded me, you know what I mean? Hoping to get a good return, you know? So, you know, there's no hard feelings at all. So when it comes down to it, you got, you can pick anybody. Nobody's going to take it seriously, but I'm putting every captain on the spot, start bench and trade. Who are you going to pick? Um, golly. <laughs> Um, let's go. Can I go the opposite way? Whatever you want to do. Trade? Yep. Whatever you want to do. All right. So I would trade, I can't trade myself, but I would, I guess I'll trade, um, who's going to yeah, get a big return. Maybe you send a picture. Yeah, somewhere. I'll trade Jeremy. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there who year after year, they, they think they get a second pitcher and they don't, Kind, they don't kind of figure out or they get shelled a little bit and so they kind of rotate back in and Jeremy is a proven winner on the mound he, he pitched absolutely great and he did not get help from us at times um last season and you know when he gets enough at bats he can be a monster at the play I mean yeah. he's already humongous so he can hit a ton um sure. but mostly because you know he and I have talked about kind of our roles um and I would want him to get more playing time than I might potentially be able to get him this year. Um, so that already has been a discussion, but he, you know, he's, he's decided he's, he wants to be with us. He loves what we're building. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, but he's my guy. Like, you know, he and I have had a relationship yeah. for a long time. I mean, he's been on the team longer than all the guys we've talked about so far. Yep. So um, yeah, he, that the big reason would be to try to get him as much playing time as I possibly could. Sure. That's why okay. I that. Makes sense. Um, I would, I'm benching myself. So <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> for sure. Um, and then, man, starting so tough because they're – Pick one. Got to pick one you know, and start great. over everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go with uh, – uh, man, let's go with my guy Cam. I mean, I need I need a pitcher. He's yep. right now ranking at the top of the top 20 for us. And you got to um, go with him. Guy, yeah, he's – He's who I would pick to to start with. So I always it's always fun to put the captains on the spot with that question because you see them all yeah. stirring their heads like who's gonna get the most mad when I sell them trade and bench? But <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, no no it's uh, no hard feelings for anybody. But yeah, thanks for doing yeah. that fun thing. But um, let's break down the divisions. We you know we had the division draw, and you know your division is by far the most fun. Um, Glendale Chrysler Dodge Chief and Rand Division. Not only do you have you guys who are the most, you know, the best roster you guys have ever had in your franchise history. You are the, you're continuing to build something great um, for this franchise. You have the Rockies in this division who have never missed the playoffs ever and in the franchise era. And you have the defending champion Expos in this division who you guys have some strong success against. Um, last year, you were the only team in the entire league that beat them twice and you beat them convincingly by a run scored runs allowed by 23 to two. So beat them 16 to one and seven to one. So convincing victories for you guys against that high powered pitching. Um, you know, they only, they only gave up 58 runs on a season and 23 were to you guys. So like, if you put that in perspective, like this division, and when we were doing the division draw, you, Jimmy Nelson and Blake Spencer were commenting heavily on it. And Jimmy was so excited to get the Rockies and him and Blake were talking smack. And then all of a sudden Jimmy's you know, mentality turned when he heard the Astros were in the division too, because you guys rocked him last year. So kind of talk about your division and can anybody win this division? Is this going to be, could all three could make the playoffs or if you beat up on each other? only one might make the playoffs. Like that's how good this division is. So kind of talk about your division and, and what do you think is going to be one of the, out, some of the outcomes of this Glendale Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Rand division? Yeah, it's going to be fun. Like you said, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, I think you have the Rockies, as you mentioned, you know, they perennial playoff team, they're tough to beat. It yeah. doesn't really matter what year and who's who they got. And do they go from five men lineup to four men lineup to hell? They could bat seven. They're still and gonna, they're returning full strength with Grant Boyd coming back this year. Yeah, who's who's a huge get again yeah. this year? So they're they're tough, man. I mean, it's 
you don't want to hit it to the left side with BK out there. It's like, it's just a death sentence, you know, and then you got Blake, who's just a monster at the plate every year going in, like one of the favorites for the MVP. Sure. They're tough. Um, but you know, we've, we did okay against them last year. Um, you know, we're, we're not taking anybody lightly, of course, because we've been a bottom feeder for a long time, but they'll, you know, it, it should be a fun matchup. I think um, we'll see what happens there. And then, yeah, with the Expos, we've, we've had some recent success with them. Um, you highlighted a lot of it, but at the same time, I feel like the Expos are coming in with a chip on their shoulder again, which is kind of crazy to say when you're the defending champion, sure. no. but I don't think anybody's actually expecting them to make the playoffs again. You know, I think going in, you still think of these top five teams who are always the playoff teams. And you think of the rest of us who are before out kind of out of the, out of the realm running, but I mean, they're the defending champions and they have yeah. the best greatest rotation we've ever seen in our league. Yeah. And they're only going to get better at the plate. You know, their pitching is what it is yeah. and that's, that's going to be there. So they cannot be you can't overlook them. So I think anything could happen. And then like you, we've kind of talked about with us. I mean, we're, we're building something. Um, there's a lot of excitement within our clubhouse and um, you know, we have some really high goals. So to say who wins it, I'm taking us. All right. I love it. That's goal. Number one, we, we have to win the division. That's our first goal. It's the one thing we're focused on right now. And after that though, yeah. I mean, the Expos could get in. The Rockies, obviously, you can almost count them in. So you could say all three teams make it. It's pretty tough statistically yeah. to say that those three teams are going to make it and the only people from the rest of the league are going to be the division winners when you've got some pretty stacked yeah. teams in that second tier. But So I'm not going to necessarily say that all three teams are going to make it because I just don't think that's going to happen. But, you know. It's, yeah. it's going to be a really fun thing to watch between the three of us. It is. Um, and it's a division that, you know, could dominate interleague. You know, all three of those teams could have an amazing, you know, interleague play against these other teams. You know, real fast, let's talk about the other ones. You know, the uh, Cardinal Blinds and Shutters division had the Royals and the Twins, who on paper are very good teams, um, and they're in the same division. So that's going to be a dogfight of a series, along with the kind of the revamped athletic squad. Um, who a lot of people think, you know, with the loss of, you know, Mike Carl and Luke Bakula again this year um, might be one of a, a lower team this year, but they have some pieces in the draft that we've seen. Um, you know, they drafted Josh Rogers um, and they drafted Jordan Smith, who plays in the Moith League as well. So has some experience. They're friends with Keaton. And then we also have um, Chris Vorbeck, who nobody knows anything about except for Steve. But, you know, three rosters that can kind of put together uh, three rookies that can hopefully put something together for their team. But if you had to pick a winner for this division, who would you pick for the Cardinal Blinds and Shutters division? I mean, I'd probably pick the Twins. Um, I think... There's a little unknown with the Royals once you get past, you know, yourself and, and Gus. Um, there's a and, and you have Ty, who's great too, um, and him him being there is going to be a huge um, bump for them. But um, you know, it 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 kind of depends with with the Royals. It kind of depends on Ty. You know, you know what you guys are going to do. We know what the Skibbies are going to do. And when Ty's on, that guy is so good. Yeah. But when he struggles, he struggles. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's hard to say. I feel like the consistency is there with the twins. That's why yeah. I have to pick them. Um, I mean, Chris Metter, Spencer Bogad, Ed Lodonin coming off out of nowhere on the mound too. So let's see what yeah. happens there. And they get Will Roth back. And, and Corey um, McCarthy, not to mention too, yeah. who's oh, had yeah. back, well, back to back great years. Kind of like Keaton. That, yeah, one one guy, through five, it is definitely probably the best team on paper. One through five. Yeah. Like there's yeah. nobody that has five players like that. Um, and with having the back-to-back -back MVP on your team, I mean, anything can happen. So um, definitely a, a good a good division. It'll be really interesting to see um, who's going to pull that off. Let's talk about the Ketting Eye Center division. Ketting Eye Center division, also going to be a fun division. You know, you had the Marlins who went 0-10 last year, looking for their first win as a franchise. And I really hope that they get it this year. You know, I hope they surprise somebody accidentally even and get a win. Um, and then you also have the Brewers, and the Yankees and the Brewers um, coming off a second place finish and the Yankees coming off a non-playoff year. So the Brewers kind of got an interesting draw here with having two teams that didn't make the playoffs and they were really happy with their pick. Um, but if you had to pick a team, do the Brewers re 
repeat or is this the back and forth year for the Yankees and didn't make the playoffs? So now are they going to go nine and one and make a playoff run again? You know what I mean? Like what's going to happen? Yeah. I mean, so I guess to talk about the Marlins, I feel like they could really surprise people. Um, I feel like there's some talent there with a uh, tall guy and their captain, Eric and Luke, you know, yeah. I think he's the only one that I really know. And they drafted, they drafted Corey Poley, the cousin of Scott and Kevin, who has played. He's only played in two or three games in the league, so he's still eligible to be a rookie. That's why he got drafted. Um, but he played for the Yankees a little bit in the franchise there. Struggled at times, but I think with his friends and everybody there, kind of gives them maybe hopefully another bat to look at um, for their lineup. So but yeah, like, yeah, I was, I was pretty much joking about surprising anybody, maybe, <laughs> um, um, but they're fun and yeah. they, they do want to win, which is the most important thing. So sure. they could do some things and surprise people, but we'll just have to see But the other two teams. Like you said, I mean, the Yankees, they do that. They are a roller coaster of a team. Yeah. And yeah, after last year, they could come back and, and be that nine and one team sure. or be that top two team going into the playoffs. I think the loss of John hurts them. Um, I think you could tell last year because you know, usually it's when they're struggling, somebody can kind of come through a little bit, keep them in games. And I feel like that was missing at times last year, but at the same time, that was a big hole in left field. I mean, they yeah. rotated some guys and they struggled a little bit with that, but I, I feel like that has changed. Now Jackson's coming on better and better and better every year at the plate um, and has earned his time at the plate and their pitching's great. So yeah. you never know. And, and, and so they could do it, but, I think the Brewers are still going to take this, um, this division. I think that the, I just feel like depending on what Pete does, who he's always really good, but then I think Kyle's going to have a bigger role and Kyle is a great player. Um, yeah. We'll have to see how much more he can do on the, on the mound for them. Um, and, you know, I think um, getting some pieces back for them this year um, could really boost them up. Yeah. So, I feel like I got to give it to the Brewers at, at worst, just because they're defending, yeah. right? They, they got, they got so close to that thing they've never had in winning a championship. So they're coming in with, with a little bit more of an edge of like, man, we were right there yep. and we just got to get, we just got to get past that one hump and they're probably going to be extremely driven for it. Yeah, none of these divisions are going to be an easy win. That is for sure. Um, but thanks for breaking it down for us, Brian. And, you know, we want to thank all of our division sponsors, Cardinal Blinds and Shutters, Glendale Chrysler, Dodge Jeep and Ram, and Ketting Eye Center back again as our division sponsors when we go back to three divisions. So thank you guys again for joining us, the sponsor family. Um, and, you know, last question before we go on to a little fun rapid fire around, Brian, you know, the schedule just came out. And our schedule, when you when you look at the 10 games on the Astros schedule, there's usually one game that can flip a switch and can change a season. You know, for the Expos, they had a game on Sunday that started off their winning streak and they never stopped. You know, so like there there is could be one game on everybody's schedule that you could pinpoint or circle to say, all right, this is our win. Like even if it's as hard to get or it's an easy win, this is our win we got to get. When you think about that as a captain, what is the one game on your schedule that you have circled as this is our important game on season 19 schedule? Opening day. Opening day. Opening day. Talk, talk to the people about what's going on opening day, the storyline behind it too. Yeah. Um, so we, we are the last game of opening day um, and we will be playing the Yankees. And um, I'm actually picking this game, not because of the storyline though, for everybody to kind of keep up with, sure. you know, John Calloway career long Yankee um, has joined our team this year. Um, and so that kind of storyline of John facing his old team for the very first time sure. in, on opening day, which yeah. is so exciting. Um, however, that's not why. And I don't think the Yankees are looking at it like that. Oh, we got to go get them because John left. Um, they're too close. And that, and that's not how this whole thing went down. And John's the same oh, way. Sure. John is you know, excited about what we're doing. And that's why he came over. But yeah. there was no um, negativity in yeah. the, in the leaving. It was, you know, a, a, it was a fun thing for everybody to, you know, kind of change it up, John, you know, and Scott was kind of at his wits end. Like, could, do I, 
play ja- John who hasn't been here or do I play Jackson who had basically the best offensive numbers on their team? So, uh, you know, he's kind of, do they bat five or does that make them worse? So it, it actually worked out for everybody almost in a sense. So, yeah. so yeah, so yeah, that's a great storyline. It's going to be fun to see what happens, but the real reason is that I'm not sure that we've ever won an opening day game. And for our goals this year, we have got to get off to a hot start. Sure. Um, it is going to be imperative that we win that first game so that we're not trying to dig ourselves out of any kind of hole yeah. come the rest of the season. Um, the other thing you can look at too is, you know, until that amazing Expos run, but really coming down to the last day, there was a three-way run between us, the Yankees, and the Expos for that yeah. wild card spot. And the, and the Expos pulled it out because they played better than everybody else. But if you want to look at, those kind of teams who are going to be potentially fighting for that four or five spot. I mean, those are three of the teams that are going to be talked sure. about. And so you need to win those games head to head so that if there are tiebreakers, you have the tiebreaker. Yeah, definitely. So that's why it's going to be important for us to get off and win that game. And really the most important game to us is the next game. Yeah. So that's and- why it's going to be game one. You know, you made a great point last year was definitely the most complicated playoff, you know, trying to figure out the playoff seeds and trying to figure out who was still in the hunt. Like it was every game mattered going down the stretch. So it was an exciting year last year and it's going to be another exciting year this year. So, all right, let's move on, Brian. We have next to kind of wrap up our, our captain's interview. I actually have 10 rapid fire questions and these rapid fire questions are brought to you by Andy's frozen custard. What better way to cool down these rapid fire questions than with a custard from Andy's frozen custard indeed. Um, so Thank you, Andy's Frozen Custom, for being back as a sponsor. But here is the rapid fire questions, Brian. For these rapid fire questions, really no explanation. I want you to just say the first answer that comes to your head. If you have a small explanation, you can, but let's let the viewers kind of think about in their mind why he may have said some of these things. First one's a little softball question for you, just to kind of get the juices flowing here. Are you ready for ready to get started? Let's do it. Here we go. First question. You and I, obviously, we met at Missouri State University as members of the Missouri State Bear Tones, um, our all-male acapella group, um, and we had some very uh, great memories and good times with that group. But here's my first question in this. Which Bear Tones solo do you think you would have been better at than the person who had the solo? He is born. He is born instead of Calvin. Very good. I love how quick that was. All right. Very good. Moving on. Let's go to some wiffle ball questions now. Um, top of your head, what is the best uniform that stands out in SWBL history? There's been some good ones. There have been good ones. You know, I really liked, I liked that the A's jersey when they had the big elephant across the sure. side. Yeah. I think it was like a, a sleeveless or it a was. tank. Yep, sleeveless. Yep. That was I, I don't know. That one, especially because it was right after all those new logos got made. It was yeah. Dope. Yeah. yeah, they and they had multiple jerseys that year. So that was a big year for the athletics for jerseys. And that's a good one for sure. Um, all right. Best SWBL rivalry. It could be past or current. It's up to you. Best SWBL rivalry. Um Rockies Brewers. Yeah. That's classic Best one. Work, I think, yeah classic who will be the 2021 swbl home run leader keaton adams keaton adams love it all right lowest era in season 19 jimmy jimmy all right who will be the astros team mvp for any reason just team mvp for the astros johnny john calloway all right, if you could trade for any player in the SWBL, who would it be? Sam Scabby. Well, Houston Astros hat. If you could draft any non-baseball professional athlete to your team, who would it be? Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. All right, same thing Gus said, actually, in his as well for the Royals. <laughs> yeah. All right, will we have an 0-10 team this year for the SWBL? We will. All right. And then who is the 2021 SWBL champion? Astros, baby. <laughs> yeah, think about it. All right. The SWBL Astros are the pick. Welcome, Brewer, to the broadcast. Hello, Brewer. 
<laughs> All right. You know, Brian, thanks so much for being here with us. You know, um, it's exciting to get back on the field. We're almost back um, in May. We're only a month away or so, a couple months away. Um, you know, last question before we go, but what, is, what, in your opinion, what's the most underrated part of the SWBO weekend? There's so many great things besides the competition, but what's something with you that's the most underrated part of an SWBO weekend? Man, um, big picture, like I know we talk about it as players, but if you're from the outside looking in, like, I, I mean, I wrote a, an article about this last year, but the bonds that these players have, um, the friendships, the, the histories that they have. I mean, it, it's crazy. I, I, I obviously got into the league because we were friends in college. Sure. Um, and when I moved to St. Louis, you were gracious enough to invite me to play. And the guys were welcoming and open and, but every year goes by. And even though I've been around since 2000, what, 14, I think 13, 14, 14. Yeah. Um, I continue to hear stories of you guys remember when we were nine years old and we did this? <laughs> it's like, man, I thought I'd heard everything and knew yeah. all the histories and, and the friendships, the history amongst the players, I think is, is the, the thing that people don't, really know is probably the most underrated thing it's a really special thing yeah. to have these friends that you've been doing this with and 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 sharing your lives with yeah still I, getting together and doing something for that little kids do yeah. and you know we're all a lot of us are in our 30s now and we're i don't know if we're planning to stop when we're in our 60s nope. we're going to be really crappy at it a br brewer right there is going to be the newest astro right let's go yeah <laughs> Yeah, Peter still owes me a son named Ash. <laughs> There you go. You know, uh, Brian, you said it perfectly. I mean, the SWO is all about that. You know, it's that camaraderie before the competition. And, you know, this, I can't believe that next year, season 20, and we've been doing this for two decades. Um, and I, you, you said it correctly. The, the story is just never end and the memories continue to be a part of it. And there's not many leagues out there that can say that they've all started because it was the same people from the same high school or even the same elementary school is how this league started. And there are a few of the leagues out there there, but not the long-standing history that we have of 19 years and next year to be 20. Not many leagues can say that. I mean, it's going to be a huge deal next year for season 20, but Brian, thank you so much again for joining us. And Brewer, thank you again for joining us as well at the end of the broadcast. Oh, scowl. All right. But, you know, thank you so much, Brian. And I'm so excited to see the Astros this year in action on the field. I can speak for everybody when I say that Glendale Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram division, every division game is going to be so important and fun to watch. Anything you want to leave everybody with? No, right let's, on. Uh, let's have a great time. Everybody yeah. stay safe between now and then. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody having a great time and it's going to be a fun year. Awesome. So Thanks again to all of our sponsors, Logix, um, L-O-G-E-X-I-N-C.com. So no, <laughs> <sure. Scrub>. oh, <laughs> and then our division sponsors, Cardinal Blinds and Shutters, Glendale Chrysler, Dodge Jeep and Ram, and Ketting Eye Center, along with Andy's Frozen Custard. Thanks again, Brian Benware, captain of the Astros. For Brian Benware, I am Sam Skibby. We will see you next time for the fourth captain's interview with co-captains Kevin Wee Tucker and John Light from the defending SWBL Expos. Brian, indeed. All right, thanks, Brian, for joining us. We'll talk to you guys later. See you. Bye-bye.